128.3 proof on a Woodford? Damn. What's up everyone, I'm Jason C and today we got Woodford Reserve's annual release of their batch proof bourbon at 128.3 proof. It's the highest proof release to date. Does that plus their new bottle design make this a must buy? Let's find out today on The Mass and Drum. Remember last year, Woodford Reserve released the very fine and rare bourbon, which had some 17-year-old bourbon included in the blend, which was created to honor the many discoveries and innovations that occurred at the 1812 distillery site where Woodford Reserve is now located. From here on out, the Masters Collection bottles will all focus on modern innovations going forward. That release also introduced a new bottle design that changed from Woodford's pot still shaped bottle to their throwback and iconic flask shaped Woodford bottle that you see here. Now the bottle shape has gotten some mixed reviews. I was a fan of the old pot still. If you've ever been to Woodford Reserve and you see those nice big pot stills, and remember Woodford Reserve uses a blend of column and pot still for their uh, bourbons and their whiskeys. But those big pot stills that they have that are pretty iconic on their logo, you see the three pot stills, which they have right there on site at Woodford. Uh, that's kind of a, you know, an homage to that or an homage as they say. But the new bottle design, you know, people have called it uh, you know, a, a, a hammer, a mallet. <laughs> uh, it does have that flask style to it. I've also heard people refer to it as the Elmer T. Lee bottle with a longer neck. I mean, that's pretty spot on. That's pretty close. Yeah, I'll give you that. I think it looks like one of those bottles people try to put little clipper ships in, you know, put a little model boat in. I've also heard people refer to it as uh, my buddy Will Hendo Henderson called it the, uh, the bowling pin bottle. And I thought bowling pin is actually, that's, that's probably my favorite so far. So aside from the new bottle shape, Woodford Reserve is normally bottled at 90.4 proof for everything. Master distiller Chris Morris said that most people do not get to experience Woodford Reserve at such a high proof presentation, so we are honored to share this special bourbon with the public. The depth of flavor found in Woodford Reserve batch proof is truly remarkable. All right, so I poured this glass about 20 minutes ago. I really felt like the first couple pours I had of this were really tight, really needed to open up a little bit. So let's see if it has opened up at all. We're also gonna add a little bit of water to this to see what happens to it. This is bottled at its highest proof, as I mentioned ever, at 128.3. Was released on March 17th at the distillery. Now Woodford batch proof is crafted using the same grain bill and process as Woodford Reserve Kentucky straight bourbon. 72% corn, 18% rye, 10% malted barley. Unfortunately, there isn't much more info than that. No age statement. I'm guessing this is chill filtered and a suggested retail price of 130 bucks for a 750 milliliter bottle. So let's give it a go. All right, so I decided to pull the trigger on this one this year because you know it was its highest proof ever. Really want to see how Woodford tasted at that super high proof. So let's get into the nose, see what we get. A lot of oak and leather on the nose, a lot of oak and leather. So believe it or not, I used to ride a motorcycle uh, back when I was in New York, and uh, I had a, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't a, uh, it wasn't a speed bike or a crotch rocket, as they say. You know, it was a, it was a Harley Softail. Love that bike, and I remember, you know, kind of going to the shops to look for a leather jacket at the time. And yeah, this is actually kind of reminding me of that. There's a fresh cut wood note here. Really nice brown sugars, caramels. It, it definitely has opened up a little bit from my first pour. My first pour, it was kind of, you know, you're kind of getting some like bitter oak on there, a little bit of, you know, I don't know, there was something funky about it that I just wasn't getting. I'm glad I let this open up a little bit. The nose has gotten much nicer. A little bit more uh, of a, uh, like a butterscotchy note coming through as well. 
Yeah, but the oak and the leather really coming through strong. A little bit of chocolate there too, I think. Right on the back end. Yeah, vanillas and caramels, which really weren't present in the beginning when it was all the way up in the neck, has now started to open up a little bit. So let's go for a sip, see what we get. Ooh, felt that proof. <laughs> Never thought I'd say that about a Woodford, but wow. That really punched hard right in the palate. It's my uh, first pour of the day, so wow. That one really made an impact. Let's go for another sip because I didn't really get much after I just got hit with, you know, pure gasoline. <laughs> Here we go. All right, so on the palate, more oak, definitely more leather. Nice chocolate finish on the back of this. It is very drying, I will say, my first couple sips. I mean, it is just sucking the moisture right out of my palate, especially on the finish. There's not really much there. All the moisture is gone, except I'm just getting kind of like that, that leather and, the, and like that oak, a little bit of drying oak note there. The heat is still present, still prevalent. Let's go for another sip. All right, so as you let this sit on the palate, I mean, it's tough because, I mean, the, the vanilla, the caramel, the brown sugar, that little bit of butterscotch note I was getting, it's all there. But, I mean, it is just coated in like, I wouldn't say it's like a pleasant oak taste. It's, it's a, it, there's a little bit of bitterness there, which usually kills it for me. There's kind of a bitter oak note, that leather, maybe slightest hint of like a tobacco, just kind of overlaying everything. And as it sits on the palate, you have to kind of wait for it to, you know, those, those flavors to really spring to life. This isn't one where you can like take a sip and then just kind of, okay, then keep going. It takes a little bit for this to develop on the palate. I think it's because of that really high proof. Let's go for another sip. God, it's so drying. It, it's just not, it doesn't feel great on the palate because it's like you're trying to get more moisture and, and you can't. It's just the alcohol and the oak tannins and the leather and the dryness of it really just suck the moisture out of it. Again, once, but once you get past that wall, it kind of breaks through and then here comes the butterscotch, the vanilla, and the chocolate. I think the chocolate, like this mocha, you know, mocha chino coffee chocolate note kind of hits you right in the very, very back end. But it, it takes a little bit to get there. Uh, one more sip, we're gonna add a couple drops of water to this and see what happens, here we go. I actually just got a little punch of black licorice in there too. Yeah, it's, it's kind of on the darker side here, you know, this bourbon. The sweet flavors are trying to break through, but they're just not doing it enough for me. The, the bitterness, the dry, the drying, you know, the, the, you know, kind of sucking the moisture out of your palate. It's, it's kind of overpowering the experience, but, you know, giving you that little bit of sweetness and that dark chocolate espresso note right on the back end. Yeah, it's kind of like, I don't know, this bourbon's remind me like a movie, like, uh, like Star Wars, you know, episode one, The Phantom Menace, which was a shit show of a film. But the best character in that film was Darth Maul. You know, Jar Jar Binks, I wish he was killed, but he wasn't. But Darth Maul was a badass, you know, villain in that movie, and you didn't really get to see him too much. And that's what I feel like is happening in this glass. It's kind of a mess, a little bit all over the place. It has the drying, you know, effect to it. But then Darth Maul comes out, kind of lightsabers your, your pal a little bit with some really good flavor, and then it just kind of goes flat. You know what, let's, uh, let's add some water to this and see what happens. All right guys, so I'm gonna add just a, let's see, one, uh, that was probably about four or five drops. All right guys, the water's been sitting in this glass for probably about 10 minutes, so let's see if it did anything to the nose here. Oh, this gave the nose a lot of help. Now the vanillas and caramels are kind of coming through on top of the, over the oak here. Over the oak and leather. Now it's getting sweeter. This, it just became more of a balanced nose. The sweet, a little bit of savory there too. This is some herbal quality too. Remember, this is an 18% rye, so you do have a little bit of a, of a rye spice in there. All right, let's try, let's see what happened. Yeah, the water really didn't help it too much either. I was hoping it would really bring out some more sweetness. I think it did, but yeah, the, the you know what? The leather went away a little bit, and now just really the, the tannic oak is taking over. It's got very peppery. 
I think the water brought out a lot of the rye spice actually. One last sip here. Yeah, the, the, the water I think toned it down. It didn't be, it's not so drying uh, with a little bit of water added. If you cut down the alcohol on this a little bit, gets a little bit more palatable. It's not as drying, but the problem is it didn't get any sweeter. It still kind of stayed on that drying chocolate, espresso, you know, tannic oak path. A little bit of sweetness is still there. I was just hoping it would come out more on this. I don't know this one is kind of a uh, this one's kind of a puzzler, but I think what they don't tell you on this bottle is probably what's gonna shift my decision here. All right, guys, let's go to the final breakdown. First is price. We said it's 130 bucks retail for a 750 milliliter bottle, and on secondary, I've already been seeing these because of the high proof point. Uh, I think a lot of people on secondary think that the higher the proof, the more money they can get. I've already been seeing these at 200 to 250. And when it comes to availability, this is a limited release, but overall, when it comes to Whitford Reserve, they do have really good distribution, so I feel like most people would see this more often than not. All right, so let's talk about value. Now, when it comes to value, I think this is where this bottle loses it for me because it's 130 bucks for a barrel-proof Whitford Reserve. You're not getting an age statement. Now, I think what we're seeing here is like something we see sometimes at Old Forester with those barrel picks. Those barrel-proof barrel picks that we see I would venture guess that this has a younger whiskey in it, maybe five, six, seven years old if we're lucky, and they're depending on those heat cycled warehouses to kind of push the age a little bit more than it is. And really, you're just getting a lot of tannic oak and some drying, uh, like a drying alcohol proof to it. And on top of that, you gotta look at the market right now. There's a lot of great available barrel proof bourbons. There's also barrel proof picks that could come in that are around the same proof point with way more information as far as uh, non-chill filtration and age statement, you know, stuff coming out of MGP. You have Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, which everybody knew I was gonna bring up, Wild Turkey Rare Breed. Uh, I mean, just a, a lot of great releases out there in the market now that could really go toe to toe with this really easily. So you add all that up, and I would think the value on this is low. What's the most I would pay for this? For this bottle, if it was, cheaper, I really wouldn't want to pay more than a hundred bucks for this, but unfortunately the MSRP is 130. So I guess 130 is the most I would pay. I would not go over retail for this bottle. And do I recommend this one? This one is a pass for me. I would say no. Uh, as much as I've loved Woodford batch proof releases in the past, like this one uh, and a couple of other ones that I've had early on, this one just came off way too drying, way too oaky. It had the nice balance of chocolate, some oak, some tannins there, but at 130 bucks, I just feel like there's, I mean, you can even get an old Forrester, you know, prohibition uh, at 115 proof, which is still lower proof point, but I still feel like it's probably around the same age and has more pleasing flavors in this. Um, I, I just don't think this is really doing it for me. I'm hoping maybe as it gets halfway down the bottom, maybe it opens up a little bit more, but for right now, I just can't say I would recommend it at this price point with all those missing features on the bottle as far as information and what you're getting on the palate. All right, guys, I well, hope you enjoyed this review on the Mash and Drum for the new Woodford Reserve Batch Proof 128.3 proof. Uh, if you enjoyed the review, hit the subscribe button below. Please hit the like button. If you haven't yet, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter. Let me know if you've had this, what you think about it. And as I always say, it's not about the whiskey, it's the people you share it with. So cheers, and I'll see you next time on the Mash and Drum. Take care, everybody.